My name is Dr. Flo, and this is A Voice of Victory. Welcome to this podcast this evening, and uh, the title for tonight's podcast is Hungering for a Move of God. Hallelujah. Hungering for a Move of God. And today's scripture is going to be from Isaiah chapter number 63 verse number 11 uh, to 12. And we're going to read um, from the Amplified Version. And the Bible says, Then his people remembered the days of old of Moses, and they said, Where is he who brought our fathers up out of the Red Sea with the shepherds of his flock, Moses and Aaron? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit in their midst, who caused his glorious arm and infinite power to go at the right hand of Moses, dividing the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name? Hallelujah. And um, we're going to read also from the NIV version. Um, The Bible says, Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought them out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name? Hallelujah. Now here we find that Isaiah witnessed a time when God's people were inconsistent in their walk with God. They had grown lukewarm, and as a result, they were in desperate need of a revival. Isaiah was grieved in his spirit at what he saw and began to cry out for a move of God. He recalled how God had shown himself alive in Moses' day and plead with him to show mercy and revive his people once again. Isaiah knew that they had rebelled and that they didn't deserve God's mercy. But he also knew that God was a merciful God. God was so loving that if his people would make the slightest move toward him, he would forgive them. God wants to show himself strong. God wants to demonstrate his power in our behalf. God wants to show us signs and wonders. All he's waiting for is someone to hunger for it. And this is what we see in Isaiah. He hungered for a powerful move of God. He was consumed with his desire for God to manifest his presence. He knew that only a move of God could change the condition that the world was in. In his desperation, he cried, Look down from heaven. And that's in verse 15. And then he said, Where is the love for us that you show, that you used to show? Don't you wish that more of God's people were this hungry for a move of God today? There's no telling what God might do if there were. Verse 3 says, you did awesome things beyond our highest expectation. Aren't you ready for this in our lives? I believe that God is ready. He's just looking for someone who is hungry for it. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the year, neither Hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him? And that's in Isaiah 64, verse 4. Do you really want to see God move in your city today? It appears that he'll do it if we'll just hunger for it. Matthew 5, 6 says, 
Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. God will manifest his presence in our lives in direct proportion to our hunger for it. James chapter number 4 verse 8 says, Come close to God and he will come close to you. God is telling us that he will manifest his presence in our lives if we'll just show him. I'll read that again. In James chapter 4 verse number 8. The Bible says, come close to God and he will come close to you. God is telling us that he will manifest his presence in our lives if we'll just show him that we really want it. The prophet Haggai declared in Haggai chapter number 2 verse 9, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, said the Lord of hosts. If this is ever going to come to pass, then it means that our hunger will have to be greater than the hunger of those who have come before us. Our desperation for a move of God will have to exceed their desperation. Can you truly say today that you are desperate for a move of God? Desperate people are willing to do whatever it takes. Desperate people say like Jacob said in Genesis 32 verse 26, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Is that your attitude today? Many say that they want to see a move of God. But are they willing to pay the price for it? This is what Evans Roberts was willing to do. He declared, I will not leave this place until God visits my nation. He was a man on a mission. And he knew that it would take more than just business as usual if he was to see a move of God in his generation. He decided, as he was seeking God for his presence, and I quote him, he said, I was taken up into divine fellowship, and it changed my whole being. I reached out and touched the flame of God, and now I am burning with his presence. From that moment, I knew that God was going to work in our land. And that's a quote from the world's revival of 1904. How I wish that burning would be in our hearts today. To desire to be in his presence in a powerful way. To get closer and closer to God. Hallelujah. God allowed him... Evan Roberts, to experience his presence in direct proportion to his hunger and his desperation. It's time for God's people to stir themselves and to seek God once again. The prophet Joel said it well when he declared in Joel chapter number 3 verse 9, Wake up the mighty man. And the Apostle Paul agreed with Joel and said in Romans 13 verse 11, It is high time we, wa we awake out of sleep. The cry of our heart should be as a psalmist when he said in Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2, My soul thirsteth, thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee. To see thy power and thy glory. This reminds me of what Brother Oral Roberts told, told one time when he was ministering. That Jesus said to him, Oral, healing and miracles 
are coming back big time. The great the days of greater works are around the corner. God is just waiting for us. In Zechariah chapter number 10 verse 1, the Bible says, "Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain." So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. And in Hosea chapter number 6 verse number 3, the Bible says, If we follow on to know the Lord, he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. These men are describing an outpouring of God's presence like we've never seen before. The only thing holding it back is the lack of hunger. It's time to arise and shine. As Isaiah says in chapter number 60, verse number 1, it's time to press in. It's time to get out of ourselves and get into God. Isaiah chapter number 44 verse 3 says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Oh, how I desire that God is going to pour water upon me as I continue to thirst for him more and more. And I hope you hope and pray for the same as well and desire to know him more, and to thirst for God at a higher level. God goes on to say that he will literally open the floodgates and show us his presence like never before. Do you want this? Do you really want this? Then determine right now that experiencing more of God's presence is the number one pursuit of your life. And as we come to the end of that podcast today, I just want you to know that God loves you and he desires that you would know him on a higher level, on a deeper level, and that you desire and hunger for more of him. Hallelujah. And if you do not know Jesus Christ and you're listening to the sound of my voice, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I come before your throne of grace to repent of all my sins. I ask you into my life today to be Lord and Savior over my life. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse and sanctify me. Erase my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. And from today, as I declare that you are Lord and Savior over my life, I pray that you will guide me to a good Bible-based church and that you will place good shepherds, shepherds that you have appointed for me, to guide me and direct me and to teach me and to shepherd me in my Christian walk. And in everything that I do, I pray that you will be glorified in every area of my life. Take my life and do something magnificent with it. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you so much for tuning in tonight to our podcast. It was a pleasure having you. And may you have a wonderful and blessed night And until tomorrow, remember, there is power in the word. God bless you. Shalom.